Hello, everybody. Welcome to Top Time with Asperger. You've probably heard what's happening in the news recently regarding plagiarism, especially in the entertainment industry. And to be clear, it's not just YouTube. It's everywhere. Like, this stuff happens in bakeries, too. It's just not getting written up in the New York Times. This recent calling out of plagiarism has been a long time coming. It's good. It's like cutting out tumors. It's messy and it's complicated and it is going to hurt, but it's necessary and we'll all be healthier for it. And it sucks and some of our heroes will be taken down and we will discover bad things about the people we like or in some cases, people we love. Let's just say it, I'm talking about Mumkey. And I've of course been asked to comment and in full honesty, I really, really, really don't want to. I wish I could sit this one out, but then I remembered something I said on this very show, that if it's mentionable, it's manageable. So I'm going to address the elephant plagiarizing in the room. And full disclosure, I'm still processing all this shit. But here's where I am on it as of this moment. It could change tomorrow, and if it does, I'll keep you posted. One of my best friends for over 25 years, Monkey Jones, plagiarized in front of his fans. He wielded his power with his fans in fucked up ways, sometimes to the point where they left YouTube entirely. I could couch this with heartwarming stories of our friendship or what a great guy he is, but that's totally irrelevant, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a real mind fuck, you know, because I love Mumkey, but Mumkey did these things. Both of these statements are true, so I just keep asking myself, can you love someone who did bad things? Can you still love them? I can mull that over later, certainly, because the only people that matter right now are the victims. They are victims, and they're victims because of something he did. So I hope it's okay if I'm at once very angry for the comedians he wronged and the culture that enabled it, and also sad because he's my friend. But I believe with all my heart that this moment in time is essential. It's vital that people are held accountable for their actions, no matter who they are. We need to be better. We will be better. And I can't fucking wait to be better. So in my house, I have one of those built-in security systems, right? You know, like the ADT, the the you, the someone breaks in, and it's like, beep, 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 and then you see the phone call, be like, oh ma'am, we noticed that your alarm's going off. We're gonna send the police right away, and they'll be there, and you know, they'll be there in like fifteen minutes, and the cat burglars got like two minutes to start stealing the fucking jewels and shit. Either that, or they're gonna fucking murder you by the time the cops get there, and the ADT is really pretty much useless because a cat burglar is a cat burglar. They ju- they get in, they grab the shit, they get out. It doesn't fucking matter. But what happened was my power went out, right? My power went out, and this shit was armed. It was armed. And we don't have, we don't have an account with the company that, I don't know, what, what ADT or whatever. Yeah, I should probably say this. Like this <laughs> I should probably say, yeah, the <laughs> fucking home security system don't work. Sorry, guys, I'm s- <coughs> still sick. The home security system here doesn't fucking work. This is perfectly something to talk about. Uh, <coughs> so it was armed. So I would open the door to leave, and it would just go, whoo! And like all these fucking alarms would go off and I would have to, I don't, there was no way to turn it off. I would have to fucking flip the fucking power circuit and then turn it back on. But then when I turned it back on, it was fucking armed again. So I wanted, I needed to go to the supermarket cause I was fucking hungry. So I just fucking, I turn it off and then I leave and then I come back to a fucking house. that's like 90 degrees because the AC has been gone for, I've been off for like the 15 minutes that I was gone because I live in Florida and it's like 6,000 fucking degrees here. This fucking piece of shit state, this dick armpit of America. But, uh, so I just keep having to shut it off and I'm trying to figure out the keypad. Cause it's just like, okay, let, let's see. Like my parents might have fucking entered this shit. So let's use a normal passcode. Yada, yada, yada. I'm putting all the numbers in and it just won't work. And then it just starts fucking going like, whoop, 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 whoop. so I'm at my wits. So I got a call. I got a fucking call and I, I call the company and they're just like, Hell, Hey, yeah, just uh, tell us the address and we'll, we'll tell you how to turn it off. So then I tell them the address and it says, Oh, I'm sorry. We don't have an account with this house. There's never been an account with this house. And she's like, well, well, when did you guys install it? And I was like, I don't know. We bought this house with it installed. And she's like, well, there's no account associated with it. So I'm like, it's probably built with the house. And she's like, well, uh, oh, well, I don't uh, We were going to have to transfer you to, to customer service and whatever because you don't have an account. So then I get transferred to customer service. And I tell them the same spiel. The, the alarm's going off while I'm on the phone, by the way. Like, I'm just like, uh, I think you can hear what my problem is. I'm kind of 
th- this ADT shit, instead of keeping people out, it's keeping me in. I can't go outside, as you can hear. So again, they're just like, okay, well, tell us the address. And I told them the address. Well, there's no account associated with this. And I'm like, so what? I, I just need you to tell me how to turn this off. I don't need the protection. The cops aren't even here. This is like 20 minutes. I'm like, the police aren't even here. If I was getting murdered, I would have been dead already. This shit is obviously not activated to call the police. It's just straight up here to be a nuisance. And they're like, well, I can't tell you for security reasons. Yada, 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 such and such. So I'm like, okay, help me out here. If I pull this out of the wall and unhook it, is the alarm going to stop? She's like, I can't tell you that. I'm like, okay, so where, so what? I had to turn off the electricity in my house? And she's like, I'm sorry, I have to transfer you to another place. So they transfer me to another place. I don't fucking remember that apartment. But I'm just getting angry and angry. And I'm just like, hey, you can hear what's going on. They keep saying they can't tell me how to turn this off for security reasons. I don't want to be without power for the whole thing. She's like, okay, can you tell me the address? I'm like, we don't have an address. Nobody has ever used it in this fucking house. And she's like, well, I can't really tell you. I'm, so I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Buy another house? I can't get the fuck out of my house. And she's like, well, I'm sorry. I understand. There's really nothing I can do. And I'm just like, how, if I take this out of the fucking wall, just tell me how to turn it off. And, and I, part of me wants to say, if I was a fucking burglar, you really think I'd be calling at this point? I've been on hold for 30 fucking minutes at this point. How fucking retarded do you think I would be? But obviously you can't say that because then they're going to be extremely suspect and shit. Suspicious, not suspect. Fuck it. I'm not cutting that shit out. Fuck you. <coughs> um, <coughs> then finally they transfer me to a fourth person. Then finally they tell me, all right, there's a plug in one of the closets in your house. So I just got to search every fucking closet, right? And uh, it, what happens is it's screwdrivered in. And my brother just moved out. So fucking I don't have a screwdriver. So I got I to gotta turn off my fucking circuit breaker. I got to go to 7-Eleven because that was the only thing open at that point. It was like 12 o'clock at night. And I was so frustrated because it's just like, whoop, 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 whoop. And I need to get to fucking sleep and shit. And just fucking, I buy a screwdriver and then I unscrew the thing. So that's all you need to fucking tell them. If anyone wants to be a burglar and they have an ADT system, just hop in there with a screwdriver, screw it in, unplug it. The cops aren't going to show up in time. It's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. Anyway. So that was my little ADT adventure. And then uh, I went to New York. I went to New York with Monkey Jones and Sheepover. And we met Reactor and Asterios and Sriracha. And even Erich was there, the resident cuck. Um, that was such a great time. You know, it, it means more to me because I'm from New York. So I got to I got to visit my grandmother. I stayed with her for free in a little bit. And I had to have oh, fucking New York bagels. God, they don't boil them here. The fucking pizza, man. It, even though it was $4.50 a slice, it's fucking worth it. The fucking pizza. The euros, man. The, the euros are fucking some of the best euros in the world. Just off the fucking sidecars outside of the Museum of Natural History. The fucking dirty water hot dogs. Oh, just seeing civilization. Seeing art. Seeing bars. Just, just fucking good shit everywhere. Just good shit just shit to do there's nothing to do where i live there's like one museum i live near nasa that's the only thing that they have it's just the fucking astronaut nasa museum that's it that's it you can either get on cruise ships at cape canaveral or you can go see fucking nasa you you either people come here to fucking die fucking old new york jews come here to fucking die that's where i live but I don't know. It was it was great. I, I got to spend a lot of time with one of my best friends who plagiarized my fucking joke, as you guys heard earlier. And uh, Sheepover is one of my best friends. And Erich, Erich is a really good friend. I wouldn't say one of the best. He 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 fucking hates my guts. He fucking hates my guts. He was fucking he was fucking <laughs> he was fucking uh, white explaining how I should feel about Luis Guzman being the Count of Monte Cristo. So I was telling him, isn't it bullshit that Luis Guzman just played a Hispanic sidekick in the Count of Monte Cristo? He's like, no, that makes it better because there's diversity. And he's like telling me how I should feel. This is after the, the fucking uh, Ocean's 8 debate. We, we continued with the camera fucking stopped. <laughs> he kept going for a while there. And uh, <laughs> I miss Cheerios and Sriracha and my girlfriend are all just like, can you guys shut up, please? Can you guys shut the fuck up? <laughs> just sucking the life out of the room. But no, it was great. We got to film a lot of videos. I got to see movies with my friends. I got to see my girlfriend. Girlfriend, by the way. I have a girlfriend, by the way, if you guys haven't fucking heard on my streams. Um, yeah, she's really nice. It's my, uh, it's my Ren. It was not, I had to spend money to get an Airbnb, but we had a good time. I shouldn't say that. That's was fucking making her feel guilty or some shit. Uh, no, but it was... It's really fucking great. I really enjoyed 
New York, man. I mean, it's nice to be with friends and just hang out and not worry or have responsibilities or whatever. It's like a vacation. You don't have to just fucking... Uh, like, like even I would drink at the bars and save for one night <laughs> that fucking monkey's faggot ass uploaded. Which wasn't only booze, by the way. Fucking uploaded me blackout fucking moaning my girlfriend's name wrong. It's just weird. Uh, <coughs> uh, it was it was fucking great. And, you know, having someone in my life that cares about me again the way that somebody who was interested in me would is really, it really meant a lot to me. And I remember, I remember on the drive home, I had landed in Florida and I went on the drive and everything. And um, I went to my parents and I talked about, you know, what was going on and everything. And I remember driving home, I was on I-95 and I was just like, you know, that was, I was just thinking back at like all the, the fun meals we had, going to Central Park, going to the Museum of Natural History, just bothering sheep over, just fucking being a dick to monkey, just shitting all over E Rich, to holding my girlfriend's hand, to hanging out with the stereo and Sriracha, filming a Cake Jerry music video on. <laughs> like, they, I didn't even think that I would get anything for me out of this, but I'm just like, hey, let's film. I was like, yeah, can we film a Cake Jerry music video? It's only like a minute and a half, and a stereo's just fucking. He went with it. He was so excited to do it, and he pretty much made the music video, and I'm so fucking grateful that he would go so out of his way just to make my dumb Cake Jerry Me music video. Like, he directed it and everything. It really it really meant a lot to me. Like, Asterios is really a great guy. Not to, uh, I didn't suck his dick then, but I guess I'll suck it now. I had a huge opportunity to suck his dick when I was there, but I guess I'll just save it for now. Uh, no, but they, yeah, they're class acts, unlike Monkey, who's just a fucking asshole nonstop. Just shitting on New York. It's just like, oh, there's no bars in New York, but I got a fucking Airbnb at Red Hook. There's no fucking bars around here. I thought this was a city that never sleeps. I'm not downtown. I'm, in a, I'm not in Times Square. I expected the rest of this fucking city to be 24 7 Why are there no bars in this port area with nothing but industrial warehouses and a, the largest Ikea in New York? This place fucking sucks. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a 20 minute walk to the fucking train I thought the public transportation here was better <laughs> uh, but uh, no I remember I was driving I was driving down I-95 and I was just like I felt happy you know I felt like you know people are actually watching my streams I'm still getting I'm getting new subscribers every day my Patreon grows I'm making music and people actually like it. And I just was happy. And the first thing in my brain says is just now. Do it now. Turn the wheel. Just turn the fucking wheel and end it now. You're happy again. End it now before it gets bad. And I knew I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't because, you know, I'm I'm still going to be happy. And I should go with this. I should go and keep improving my life and, and be happy. But, you know, I still had doubts. And I talked myself out of it. I talked myself out of it, obviously, because I'm, I'm still here. And that's not something that I should even do. But I talked myself out of it. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to stay happy. It's not going to go to shit. Not this time. And... You know, I, I had my birthday. We we went out. We had a uh, we we went out, and I got what? What did we eat? Fuck, I, I don't remember what we ate. Oh, I, I went to a barbecue place. I got a fucking full rack of ribs. It was goddamn delicious. The parents were were nice and everything. My brother was nice. He gave me gifts. It was you know, despite turning twenty four and looking like I'm forty, especially today because somebody somebody uh, the fucking cashier thought I was a father. Today, that fucking cunt. She was just like, oh, how old are your kids? Like on fucking Father's Day. Like, I don't have any kids. Am I balding that hard? That Cake Jerry video makes me cringe because there's a time where I like turn, tilt my head towards the camera at the top of my head. And you can just see how fucking, how fucking much of a bald 
the fucking man. How did my girlfriend even lay her hands on me? She's fucking... Yeah, I have a mentally disabled girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was really great. And then I come home and I stream and you fucking psychopaths give me like a hundred, a couple hundred dollars. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm on cloud nine. Like I'm, I'm happy. And I, I feel like everything's finally looking up after the, the year and a half of just fucking pain and alcoholism. Like I, I barely drink anymore. Uh, the, the fact that I was at bars in New York and I was unable to get drunk, I would just be able to just have like one or two beers and just have a good time. It was it really is a big step for me. And I'm proud that I could have been that happy and everything. And I, I was just enjoying it for like two, three days and everything was going good. And I was I was on the phone with my girlfriend. We we are we were being all fucking gay and shit and uh, I was so happy. And then I got a message from my ex.